channel. Wow, it's been a long time. But what a time to come back. Perfect time to celebrate someone's birthday. Hmm. But before we get into that, I'm sure you've noticed that I am a lot clearer now and there's lights on me. And I would love to thank my sound crowd for making this happen. So really, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your help. Now I have lights and I can film and I will figure this out more because this has been a process. I had to film this video three times, so hopefully this one goes out. But now back to our content, since this is a very, very, very exciting video, since we can only actually make this video once every four years. Rossini was born on February 29th, 1792, which means he only has a birthday every leap year. Rossini wrote 39 operas, which is only a chunk of what he composed in general, and he only wrote until the age of 36 when he decided to retire from opera, but we will get to that opera which he retired after in a minute. And Rossini was actually extremely famous throughout his lifetime. He didn't struggle at all. But it's been really hard to narrow down to just six pieces of vocal work so bear with me, but we're gonna do it. It was really hard to do, but I did it. So without further ado, let's get into these six videos, these six vocal works. So we'll see. Anyway, at number one, The Barber of Seville. Well, we all know it. I know it, you know it, your neighbor knows it, the guy watching the car commercial knows it, because it hosts the opera Figaro, 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 Figaro comes from here. Not, confusingly, Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro, but The Barber of Seville. Yes, it's the same character, except The Marriage of Figaro comes after The Barber of Seville, but was written before it. Confusing, but they're both the same Figaro guy. Here, Figaro is aiding Count Almaviva to wed Rosina. Will she become... Countess Almaviva? I mean, you're gonna have to figure that out, put two and two together. This not only hosts Figaro's famous aria, but also the famous mezzo aria, Una Voce Poco Fa. Apparently, Rossini wrote this opera in just two weeks, but according to him, in 12 days, which is ridiculous, but whatever. Um, and he was only 24 years old when he wrote it and it was performed, which is also incredible. It's just incredible. Everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own journey. Avi, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. At number two, Semiramide, which was written in 1823. The role of Semiramide was actually written and first performed by Rossini's first wife, Isabella Colboran, a Spanish singer who were not classifying her voice type because there's there seems to be a huge debate about this. And it just goes to show in everything else in life, don't classify people into boxes. Literally, Rossini wrote music for her, so he did whatever she could do. So we basically all have to live up to her. This is the last opera that Rossini ever wrote in Italian. After that, he moved to Paris and wrote the rest of his operas in French. I actually saw this two years ago with my mom at the Met, and the costumes and the sets were outstanding. And my mom loved the opera too, so there you go. It is based on Voltaire's tragedy, Semiramides, which is based on the legend of Semiramides of Assyria. This story is filled with politics, hidden identities, and is a very soap opera type plot. It is definitely a night at the opera. Are you looking to take the kids to the opera? Well, look no further. Here's one, La Cenerentola, which is Rossini's version of Cinderella. Now, everyone knows the story of Cinderella and it's very easy to follow, but they're a little bit different here because even the prince goes undercover in order to find his special someone, his Cinderella. And Cinderella's name is Angelina, which is kind of like the ballerina. And my goodness, I love those books. I loved them so much as a kid. Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, here's one that might not be on everyone's watch slash listen list, but 
I love it and I'm making this video, so I get to decide. Stava tomato, yes. There is the famous Stava tomato by Pergolesi, which every soprano and mezzo do at some point because it's just the two of them and it's beautiful and it's, I actually really love that one too. But plenty of other composers wrote their own versions to Stava tomato and Rossini is no different. Rossini's Stabat Mater is just so grand and oh, I love it. It's like very, well, it's very Rossini and operatic and I just love it. I really do and I wish I, I would sing it one day. I really do. I have to look into that. Maybe not now, but in future. But I love it. I really want, oh, I love it. There's a little bit of politics and uh, some scheming around this composition because Rossini asked his friend Giovanni Tadaloni to help him compose this piece of music and instead of publishing both their names on the work, Rossini decided to scratch off Giovanni's name and just write his own and sell it to publishers. Very cheeky. Not very nice. Still a great piece of music that I love. At number five, we have the very famous William Tell, which is Rossini's last opera ever. According to Donizetti, the guy Right above him, actually, in that poster, which I wish I had, like, the actual poster of. Lucini wrote first act and the last act, but the middle act was written by God. It says a lot about the opera. This is the opera that holds the very famous overture. Which, to most people, is a beautiful piece of music. To me, it was my alarm clock growing up because that's how my dad used to wake us up. Literally sing that while trying to get us out of bed over and over again until we got out of bed. Talking about my parents a lot in this video, but I have also linked the Looney Tunes version in the description box below because that's not one to miss. After completing his masterpiece of William Till, Rossini put down his composing quill and decided to leave composing opera behind. No, he did not die. He actually just retired and lived for another 40 more years until he came out of retirement for our next piece, which is Petite Misa Solanelle, another one of my favorite sacred music pieces. Oh. The piece was first performed in the new home of Count Alexi Pilet Will, who apparently commissioned this for his wife, or at least the piece is dedicated to her, which makes everyone believe that that's, that's the case. Like I said, I just love it. It's a gr one of my favorite masses, and mm -hmm. I think there's something about Lucini's mezzo arias and soprano arias that I just love in, oh, I just, I just, it's so great. Anyway. I think I'm gonna end this video here. So that's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy my face back on your screen and a lot clearer in a craziness way. And yeah, get used to this <laughs> and those and yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I will be back next week with a new video. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so you can be, um, you know, notified when a new video comes out, which has been sparse, I know, but lots of has been happening, and I can't wait to share with you everything. But in the meantime, have a great, 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 great week. Drink lots and lots of tea. And and go see an opera or listen to a mass because there's so many to choose from yeah use the hashtag diva studies so i can find you you can find me you can find your friend who's also at the opera yeah just let us know what you're going to see really into it anyway all right i think i'm gonna leave now okay bye Ooh, cold very cold that guy tell that guy Whee. That's wrong. Uh, Count Alexi Filet. No, not Filet. Not Filet. He's not a piece of fish. Yeah. Who's your favorite Mesa spy? Just wondering that. Oh, where are you? Ooh, through the viewfinder. There we go. So that was six. Let me know what your favorite Wussinis are. I stop you. What's going on? Please stop. No, oh, that's how you stop.